Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein, back again with this week's installment of Rabbi Ian 3. 3, yes, 3. We're going to try for it. Brought to you by Maor DC. Yes, Maor DC. Find us at MERDC.com or on Facebook. Learn about our programs. It's a double portion this week in the book of Leviticus, Vayikra, Tazria, Metzorah. And I wish I could say it's an uplifting message. It is ultimately but it's a hard-hitting message because these, these two Torah portions deal with the manifestation of one of the worst transgressions in the Torah, Lashon Hara. You can't say enough about Lashon Hara. Don't say Lashon Hara, but you can never talk enough about it. It's such an evil thing. Lashon Hara is often blandly, lamely translated really as gossip, which it is, but it's the literal translation, Lashon Hara, a tongue that's evil, speech that's evil, evil talk that does evil to your fellow man, derogatory information that you share about a fellow Jew for no constructive reason, just shooting off your mouth about what you don't like about someone. It's not just a bad habit, it's evil. More destructive than we can ever imagine, as I'll tell you in a second. But this week's Torah portion talks about in ancient times when the temple stood, God would send us a little warning bell, a warning note, a message if people, we were speaking Lashon Hara. We might get a, spa, a patch of discoloration on the wall of our house. And if we didn't shape up on our clothing, and if we didn't shape up on our skin, and all the details of the patch of whitish uh, skin that was a signal that we spoke Lashon Hara. You read this Torah portion, you think, wow, it's a dermatologist's dream. No, no, nothing to do with dermatology. It's a gossiper's nightmare. The nightmare of someone speaking Lashon Hara, God in his mercy says, I'm going to give you a warning. And it would appear on your skin. And all the details are in this week's Torah portion. A doctor was not in charge of checking out, not Dr. Cohen, but the Kohen. That's my joke, right? You have to go to the Kohen. Why? The Kohanim were the Jewish priests, were the ones who were the intermediaries to help us come close to God through the temple service. They were the ones who declared whether an affliction was indeed dermatology, a dermatology problem or negat saras, and they knew how to, how to determine it. And if it really was the affliction, you were declared tame, impure spiritually, and sent out of the city. And the oral tradition says, because you caused division between people, you're going to have a division now between you and other people. That's evil talk. Now, we don't have that nowadays. It's actually a shame in a way, because we could live our whole lives for many years yapping, yapping bad things about people, and instead of getting the warning on the walls of our house, we might think, oh, it's not even registering an effect. But the holy Chafetz Chaim, great sage in the 20th century and 19th century, who wrote about Lashon Hara says, Hashem's protecting your skin, but your nefesh, your soul, is scarred with, with this negatsaras and if you're not if you don't repent when you leave this world everyone will know your your soul will it'll be visible that you spoke lashon hara and he lists in his his classic work on lashon hara many other awful awful things that happen to someone who speaks lashon hara your own prayers are not heard your own merits you might have had by studying torah can be nullified um Many, many horrible other things. And he says, because every other sin we might do with an individual limb, and that limb gets spiritually impure, impure. But our language is the essence of what a human being is. So to speak evil talk brings impurity on our whole personality, on our whole person. I got to go now. I got to stick within three. Evil talk, no. Let's talk nice. Let's be good. Let's grow to be holy people. Have a great Shabbos. Ah, look at this. A blooper. Stop recording already.